Hey everyone, it's Cygnus, and welcome back to Create Astral. So, in today's episode, we're gonna try and go and get a house built somewhere out in the woods, and then get into Chapter 1, and actually do some of Create. So, in between episodes, I actually went out and did a bit of exploring. You can kind of tell from the map if I go outside. Is it gonna work? I'm not too familiar with how to use this map. I need to change the layer. Oh well, I explored a little bit to the west. I found a mountain actually there, Windswept Hills I think it was called, and I was able to find some iron. So we are actually- hello, can, can you please get out of my doorway? I am so excited to move out of here. It is a few days into this world, and I have been dealing with these guys so much between episodes, and it is so annoying, and I am very excited to leave. Well, I packed up a bunch of stuff that I'm going to be using to actually build the houses, and of course I'll gather some resources as I'm building it. I also obtained some iron ingots, and I did check I can't make iron armor. I will just have to settle with copper until I'm able to get a bit further into Hephaestus. Before we go out and find a place to build a house, I'm going to go ahead and open up the quests, and I was able to complete these copper quests over here. These are just building copper armor, and I already had that, I just didn't get it completed because of the quest bug. And I found out, I didn't actually know this, the zoom key in this mod pack is Z. So I can just press Z and it automatically zooms me in. And just for good measure, one more zoom. So it has a built-in zoom key and it gave me a gray toolbox and a spyglass for that information. And I also got a copper chest. As you can tell here, it's a chest that just has a larger inventory than your basic chest. I made two of them and then they gave me an extra one for free, which will be very convenient when I'm actually building the house. Now, it is gonna be nighttime pretty soon, so I should probably figure something else out to do. And I was thinking, I do wanna get into some cooking, and this gives me rice. So I can build a stove, and I'll be able to make some rice after, but I think I'll need to make a skillet or... Yeah, I'll probably need to make a skillet, and then I can start getting food, because since we are playing on hardcore mode, dying of starvation is definitely not something that we want to have happen. And this is where I gathered some stone. It's not substantial, but that is water, and it flooded this area, and it was very fun, and it went all the way down. But optimally, we should just be able to go and build our house and not run into too many issues. Now, I'm pretty sure I want to build in the, I believe it's called an old growth birch forest. Let me double check this. Yeah, an old growth birch forest. I do want to build out over here because I was exploring the biome a little bit and it's just so pretty. It's honestly like fascinating how pretty it is to me. Let's see, can we change the, there we go. We were able to change the vertical chunk. And there's also some construction over here that I wanna go check out. There's lava pools and I think that's the mountain. That's the mountain over there that we were looking at. I didn't explore too far to the south or to the north. I do know there's something right there. I think it's another train track. So we'll definitely go and check that out. I think we'll do that after we actually get into the house building part of this episode because I need somewhere more permanent to live where I can start building all of my create constructs and the various tech that's going to need to go into a place and the various tech that's going to need to go into getting farther into this mod pack. So it's about to be nighttime. I think we just have a few more in-game hours, which will come out to maybe one or two minutes. So I think we can look around this area just a little bit and then go ahead and head back home. I did pillage some potatoes for myself as a makeshift food in the meantime, since I won't be able to set up a proper crop system for a little while. And there's some things I learned in between episodes that I was a little curious about in the last episode. So first and foremost, all of these naturalist snakes are pretty much passive as long as you don't hit them, which I haven't tested, but they don't really do anything and none of them have attacked me. I've gotten closer than that to a lot of them. And the thing I saw go into the ground that I thought might be a wasp, it was a firefly. That's what fireflies do. When the morning comes, fireflies just go into the ground. Which I should know, I, I live in a place that has fireflies and I, I've seen them do that, I should know that. Now, a forest fire happened here, but the question is, what started it? Is there a lava pool? Ah, yes, there is. So we got that. This area is pretty neat. It's a dark oak forest that turns into, I think that's just more dark oak, but it's autumnal. Well, I think it's definitely dark enough. Let's, uh, oh, actually I may have overstayed my welcome. Um, I'm seeing a lot of monsters spawn already on the mini-map. That's 
pretty much how I've been knowing if I'm in a safe area or not is entirely based on the number of red dots in my proximity on the map. And it looks like they're starting to spawn very quickly. So let's get inside and hopefully get into a bed before any prevent me from doing so. Okay, all right, it is a new day and we're gonna go ahead and take some of our resources and we're gonna take our stone cutter because we're going to need that. And we can go ahead and also take our tables because we will be needing these since we're gonna need to make some repairs on our tool, on our tools, and we'll take some more copper just in case. I don't think we're gonna need our iron just yet and we can move all that over in a little bit, but I think let's go ahead and bring a copper chest with us and somewhere to store the items. And that should be good enough for us right now. I don't think we're gonna need anything more than that. I may come back for a furnace just in case but frankly i don't think we're going to need anything and if i need a furnace i can always just come on back now i have done a little bit of exploring out this direction and i did find a few little holes in the ground they're just little like diagonal caves carved in almost like someone just took a knife and cut into the land yeah just like this here's one there's a firefly hello and yeah you can see like right there i did a little bit of bridging to go get some iron and Overall, I really think this zone is very pretty, but I'm a little concerned about how unsteady it is under the ground. And I'm going to need a lot of underground space to be able to do some of the work I want to do with Create, because I definitely want it to be aesthetically pleasing, but also functional. And if I'm going to do that, I'm going to need it to work underground or get a lot better at making my builds prettier while using tech. And that was a weird looking chicken. Anyways. Oh, yeah, okay. This is just another one of those houses. What do we actually have in here? Oh, this is actually really useful. So we have some bricks, cogwheels, and rails. And I'm actually going to leave that because we're going to come back for that later. This has wheat dough and cabbage. The cabbage I can use to make hamburgers, and those are, those are very useful. I actually know of a way to automate those a little further on into the pack, but we'll get to that later. What's this? This is just the station. Okay. Yeah, so this is just the train station itself, and it looks like it goes off just kind of into a little kiosk. This is sort of like a workplace. Train tracks, patterns, large cogs, and andesite alloy. Okay, we'll go ahead and take the andesite alloy, and it looks like it gave us an achievement for that. All right, so let's go ahead and move back. I'm seeing monsters on the mini-map, but are they actually on the surface? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Looks like they're in a cave system just beneath the surface. That's fine. All right, so let's head up here. I'm seeing on the mini-map an area I think I might like. I do like having access to the dark oak forest, and I could probably flatten something out. Yeah, just up here might actually be a pretty good spot. There's a lot of open space. It's not too crazy with the terrain texture. Yeah, I can definitely make something with this. I think I'll drop it down to probably this level, even it out, clear out the trees. And I might actually even go down like to beach level and have everything level with the water. That way I can set up an easier crop system. Though having it slightly elevated might be good as well. I don't know, I'm definitely gonna think about this, but for now, I'm gonna get started on leveling this area out, and then after, I'm gonna just build a house, and you guys will get to see it in quick motion, but for me, this is gonna take a while. It's, the house I have planned is not, it's not like tiny, but I, w I wouldn't say it's really large. I'm not building a mansion, but this is, this is definitely gonna take me a hot minute. And I just remembered, I don't have my bed on me, so I can't actually sleep, and I'm gonna need to go and grab that bed because it's a bit of a walk home and I don't want to be out here. I will see all of you in just a minute.
All right, and we are back and we've completed the house. So just a little bit of a tour. It's nothing fancy right now. I've decided that going forward, I'm gonna build separate buildings for different things. And right now we're not gonna worry about that. We have the main house and that's all we gotta care about. So this is the entrance and this guy, he showed up while I was building. He's a wandering winemaker. He got in a fight with a zombie. Uh, I think it was like last night. Yeah, he uh, he sells stuff for making wine, which is something we can get into later. This is our entrance. I wanted to go with something a bit more open floor plan, a bit more open concept. We don't have any solid spaces for anything yet. All I know is this area will eventually be a kitchen using the stuff that you can find in the getting started section over here. All of these blocks are eventually gonna go over here and we're gonna have a proper kitchen. Out here we have just a little small crop farm. This is just for making immediate food and keeping us fed. It's nothing too fancy, but it gets the job done. And then upstairs, we don't have a lot up here just yet. It's very open, but we do have a bed, which obviously is where we sleep. And I love rooftop access, so here it is. We have some rooftop access right up here, and I think that's pretty convenient. And should we ever need to get up here, we can, or if we just want to keep expanding, we can definitely expand the house upward if we so choose to. Now, the last little addition, I don't think I included it in the little montage thing, is I added a little mine. I did this because I realized I didn't really have enough iron and I needed some more stone. So I dug this little area out and you'll see little cobblestone sections like this. That's because this just goes straight into water. See? Yeah. And I didn't really want to deal with that. So not going down that way. I had to turn here. Same thing happened. And what I found instead was a... Uh, very large cave, and I'll be honest with you, I nearly fell to my death. I was walking down, I was carving out a little staircase, step by step, and I took a step, and I looked, and I was standing like this, on the block, not shifting, which, one little nudge, I would have gone over the edge, and fallen uh, all the way down there, and this water was not there yet. Uh, that was a later addition by me. I broke some gravel, and it let the water out. But I gathered some iron down here, and hello, buddy. You're in a bad spot. Yep. Where down did you- oh. Well, he went far enough. So, this is something we're definitely gonna explore later. There's some resources down there I can see that are useful. But nothing that we need to go get right now. Right now, we're going to be getting into Create. How are we doing that? Well, first, let's go ahead and open up our quest book, go to the first page, or the first chapter, the Andesite world. Let's go ahead and accept the Welcome to Create. Now, Create in this isn't like in other mod packs. It has some unique recipes, and we're going to have to adapt. So first things first, we're going to check Understood and get 100 XP. And this is just informing us that Create is unique and figure it out as we go. So there's two things that we need to make. Bronze ingot, which is combining copper and tin in a smithing table to get the most primitive of all alloys. And making andesite compound, which is a little different than the previous methods of making andesite alloy that we saw in, say, all the magic. So for making andesite compound, we need three andesite, three iron nuggets, and three clay balls. Fortunately, I went out and gathered some clay a little bit earlier, right before I started this recording bit. So we're not really short on that. There was plenty in that river, and it's nighttime, so we should probably go to sleep and just a quick nap, and we're awake. Okay, so... I gathered plenty of that, so we're good, but we do need to make a smithing table if we want to make bronze. So how do we make the smithing table in this? Well, it's just planks and iron ingots. Nothing too fancy there. And I moved over all of my storage from the other base 
little cave hole thing. So should be good there. We have the smithing table. We'll go ahead and set that there. So it's said to combine tin and copper. Now we should have tin somewhere in here. At least I believe so. Yeah, there's some tin. And we have copper in our inventory. Let's see how this works. Do some tin and copper. Yep. And we get 22 bronze and that made a really loud noise. But we can go ahead and look at the quest. Just completes and lets us go into bronze sheets. We can slice a bronze ingot in two using a stone cutter. Two for one. What a steal. Which, gotta agree with. And I do have a stone cutter because I needed it to make this place. So we can go ahead and let's just do a couple for now. There we go. And we have that. And right now I'm just following the quests because I want to see where it's taking me. For this, we'll go ahead and make the andesite alloy. So we need to make some iron nuggets. There we go. That, that, and there we go. Go ahead and make nine for now. And then we have to put them, I believe, in a furnace. Let's go ahead and cook some andesite. And while we're waiting on that, we're going to see where this is taking us. So it's taking us to tough teeth. Cog wheels and shafts take rotating input. So already know this, but in case you don't know, create requires physical input to generate power, unlike a lot of other perhaps similar tech mods. This is much more mechanical power. It's pneumatics and hydraulics and gear shifts. We're not going to be doing anything too fancy immediately, but at least for now, we're going to get started with some hand cranks, which won't be too efficient, but they will get the job done at the very least. So we can get the andesite alloy. Yep, the andesite alloy. We'll go ahead and accept that. It's going to give us a dagger. How nice. And we have three of the cog wheels. So how do we make these? Easy enough, just andesite alloy and a bronze sheet. So we can actually just do that in our inventory. And it said we need a couple of those. So, oh, need to put the bronze sheets. There we go. And we also need the shafts, which are just andesite alloy on top of each other. There we go. And that makes eight. Wonderful. And that's going to give us a large cog wheel, a cog wheel, and more shafts. Now, in order to power anything, we will probably need a hand crank at some point soon. And this also gives us a some free stakes, which is very nice. But we're actually going to skip this for now because what I'm aiming for at the moment is this. It's called a sifter. It lets us put in sand and get mob farms. So if we can find some way to get a lot of sand, we can use the sifter and just print out all of the mob drops we could ever need. And fortunately for us, there are plenty of ways to make sand. For example, we can take soul sand and convert it into sand, gravel, convert it into sand. I think we can actually convert stone, which we can just infinitely produce into gravel and then gravel into sand. And therefore we just have infinite production of those resources. So that's sort of the direction I wanna go first. But there's other things I need to do before that's going to actually be efficient. And one of those things is getting the andesite age advancement. So this is strip any log with an axe and right click it with the andesite alloy to create andesite casings. There, there's a couple of mods that do something similar to this. And fortunately, I have a lot of stripped logs. So we take this. There we go. And this is a process we can automate later. So we've unlocked that. And we can make a pistol if we want, and we do actually have some ammunition already. So let's actually see how this is made, because having a ranged weapon might be useful. Copper ingots, an analog lever, which is very convenient that we got one of these. And we just need sticks. Let's see. I'll just make some. Oh, it's in my inventory. Totally missed that. All right, so do and do analog lever. Then how did we make that? Completely forgotten. A makeshift pistol, two copper. We need a gunpowder. And I have not killed a creeper, nor am I planning to. Okay, we can put that on the back burner and prioritize getting a makeshift press because that's going to get us in the direction of making more useful tools. And we can also get in the direction of setting up a water wheel. Why do we need to set up a water wheel? Well, having to hand crank all of our tools in Create is incredibly inefficient. And we do have a river. Granted, it's not like a flowing river, but uh, could you imagine though? If this river was actually moving. Anyways, we can set up a simple water wheel to power at least rudimentary things. And eventually we'll 
probably set up something a bit more complicated like uh, a windmill I've set up in the past or we can just set up a fancier water wheel and I have a couple of ideas how to go about doing that but for now let's go ahead and see the direction we can take with us as a quick explanation all of these little blocks over here are used for controlling the speed and direction of any kinetic energy put in by say like the hand crank or otherwise. So let's go ahead and work towards getting the mechanical press. So it requires a block of iron, an andesite casing, and a shaft. It's not too expensive. So we can go ahead and set down one of these, turn it into that, and break it. We have enough iron to make a iron block. Let's do that, iron block, andesite casing, and a shaft. And we have the first part of the press. And then the second part, is the mechanical presses depot, which is where everything is just set on top of it. So that's going to need another two andesite alloy. One to make this, there we go. And then we pick that up and we put it in our inventory with an andesite alloy and we get a depot. And the depot is what the mechanical press actually presses onto. So we can go ahead and complete this quest. It's gonna give us some andesite alloy. That's part of why I wanted to do that. And with it, we can actually pretty soon make a wrench. To do that though, we're gonna need gold. We don't have gold. We also will need to make a millstone, which is just any stone, andesite, and a cogwheel. So we can go ahead and get this out of the way. Now, mind you, we are going to need a lot of these different tools later, but for now, we're just going to make pretty much just one of each until we need more and that was a cog i think yep there we go we have a millstone now a millstone is powered in our case it's going to be by a hand crank like this next to a cog but we're actually going to use a water wheel so how do we make water wheels we have to make the advancement uh harnessing hydraulics and to get the advancement Harnessing hydraulics, we just need to make a water wheel. Now I'm gonna make sure the recipe hasn't changed, just as I thought it has not. So surround this around a cog wheel, and I'm gonna have to drop it to get the advancement. And that gets us one step there, and we can make another large cog wheel to get the rest of the way. Now to make those, it's just two cog wheels around a bronze sheet. Fortunately, that is very cheap we can go ahead and do this there we go and we get another one of these which we can put in and make another water wheel and that should once it actually counts yep it should go ahead and give us credit for it well we got the advancement oh wait i think for the advancement we need to place a water wheel and use it to generate torque okay so let's go ahead and sleep I figured out that you can sleep exactly at when it says 10.30 on the clock at the top right. It may be a little small on YouTube, but trust me, it says like 10.30 and that's when you can sleep. So we need to use this to generate some power, some torque. So let's get a simple little mechanism set up. We're actually going to use the uh, mechanical press. I think that's an efficient way to go about this. Let's grab ourselves a bucket because we will need the bucket for water because this has to flow. Let's go ahead and just set up a simple little mechanism, nothing too fancy. And then we build that. Then we should just be able to do, oh, that may flood a little bit. Don't worry about it. This is exactly how it's supposed to work. But that gives us the achievement, which gives us more water wheels. But we also need to make a sieve or a uh, sifter. So we're going to have to go find a sheep. There should be some around here. I'm seeing neutral mobs on the map. They might also just be bees. It's looking like bees. Let's go ahead and look around a little bit. And I think we should be able to find at least one sheep. Though, knowing my luck, I'm going to end up searching for an hour and I won't find that fabled sheep. I also, I may have wool back in the house. I don't remember... Okay, we're gonna check the end of this peninsula, and then if we don't find anything, we're turning back and checking the house. Okay, it looks like just more bees. Okay, let's go ahead and head back and see if we just have it in our house. If we do, that's a lot more convenient. 
It's like, I definitely think I've, like, found wool. Maybe I just found sheep and never sheared them. That's also likely. Hello. Absolutely adorable. Really love the starlings in this. Now, let's see. Do we have wool? And no. I am not seeing any wool. Yeah, no. That is unfortunate. Okay, we're gonna have to find a sheep if we want to make the sifter so we can start generating mob utilities. But I want to set up this mechanical press first, then we can worry about that. So go ahead and do this. And that's going to rotate, but that's a little bit too low. So let's actually raise this. Don't worry about a little bit of flooding. It's never a problem. See? Just fine. You can do that. There we go. And it's actually going to be rotating a little too slow. Now, you're probably thinking, well, how do you increase the speed of that? It's, it's just rotating slowly. And that is through a little trick called gear shifting. And we're gonna need some large gears for that. So it's a simple principle. We're taking the same amount of kinetic force and converting it to a higher velocity, but the same force. Because it doesn't really need to be powerful. It just needs to be quick. So we can take a couple of our cog wheels and turn them into larger ones using some bronze sheets, I think it was. What was it? Do we make these? Ah, uh, right, it's the other way around. There we go. And we do that. And let's go ahead and go back to our water wheel. And we're gonna hook it up a little close to this. So we'll just do a small one, a large one. And you'll see it even says shifting gears. And then a shaft. And then small one actually i think i'm doing this backwards we need to go big to small to actually increase the speed yes it's big to small and then we can increase the velocity or rather just the rotational speed i suppose so we can get that back where we need it to be and now you'll see that this is overstressed. so that essentially means that now it's going too fast but doesn't actually have enough energy so how do we deal with that well it's very simple we just need to add more water wheels. Which, adding more water wheels is just going to increase the ability for this to have energy. And we will have to reset it because it's not going to be sufficient on its own. Let's go ahead and throw out a little route for this water to fall. And we'll just break that. And we'll see if adding this back stops it again. Yep. So that just means this is already going kind of faster than it needs to. So maybe we can find a middle ground. Okay, so it seems that that speed is just fine. So if we change the, the location of this, we can probably just move it downward. And it's a little jank right now, but it's better than nothing. So this should be sufficient now that if we put something down on this, like a bronze ingot, it should just, there we go. It crushes that for us, and now we have a bronze sheet, which is a little bit more efficient. I wouldn't say it's a lot more efficient, but it's definitely a little bit more. But because we have that, we can, if we find some gold, we can make golden sheets. And we can also make some progress towards other things, like, for example, iron. Because currently, we can't make iron tools or iron equipment. And that's why I wanted to do this the most. The mob farms are cool, and I need to set those up later. But I need iron equipment, because this copper ain't cutting it. So let's do that. So we can actually automate this by connecting it to hoppers. But it also works just to, you know, stand by it and wait. Which is what I'm going to do, and you guys are going to get to skip ahead forward in time. So I'll see you in a second. All right, and just like that, we have our iron. And it's not a whole lot, but it's enough to get us started because with it, we can make an iron pick. And with that iron pick, unfortunately, we can't mine diamonds as much as I would very much like to, but it's at least just a faster pick for now and also gives us a neat little achievement. Let's go ahead and take this and make some sticks. I already have some right there. I keep forgetting, but we can do this. There we go, iron pickaxe. And we get the completion here. And this just needs to make a iron chest plate. There we go. And that is at least better than what we have. 
and we can definitely make more later on, but it's a s step in the right direction. And I need to throw it on the ground again, see if I can fix that, or just use a different crafting table, but it gives us an iron spear, which is a weapon that gives us extra range and more attack damage. And in order to get diamonds, however, we're gonna need to make a mechanical drill, as you can see here, made with andesite alloys and an iron sheet. You can go and ponder this to see how it works. So it's just a little gear shift so we can pick up diamond ore, but we're not gonna be able to get the block out, I believe. And I would need to double check that. So we can pick up the ore, but we won't be able to actually get the diamond out of it without a drill or some other method, such as diamond enhanced tools. Now, this has actually opened the path for a lot of different create structures and processing systems. Oh, this is what I was waiting for. There is a creeper outside. I want to see if I can kill it safely because they don't deal explosion damage. Nope, let's try another one. Hey, buddy, back up. Nope, okay, let's try an iron spear. It has a bit more reach. I don't have the benefit of using shield. That's dangerous. Oh, this is dangerous because I want to get a creeper because I want that gunpowder, but it's a heavy, heavy risk. Let me just try this. Let's see what we can do. Come on, lure him over. Come on, buddy. Now, this seems very silly, but playing on hardcore mode, you can't take enough risks. Nope. Okay. This one doesn't have any knockback. So that's a non-starter. Dang it! You know, normally I'm a bit better at this, but the combat changes have made this harder than it normally is. Already a little uncomfortable with being out this much at night. Especially knowing some of the things that can appear. Yep, That's the skeleton with a gun. Some other things, too. Heard a couple weird noises. Let's go ahead and head inside. We can think about this from up here. I don't even know if I'm able to sleep. Hello. Oh, I can. Okay, this should filter out everything but the creepers. And then we can actually just go specifically for the creepers. Because I really want to make makeshift pistol. Like the skeletons. Are you kidding me? This has become a difficult situation and oh my god, I was not wearing a chest piece. I could have been one shot by any of those things. Well, that works, I guess. And they gave me some copper bullets for my troubles. Let's finish up some zombies. Yep. And are there any creepers around or have they all gone into hiding? What? I was totally blocking that. It's a weird little dance when you're trying to fight those skeletons. Oh, oh no, thank you. Out into the sunlight with you. Oh, you're wearing armor. Eh, I don't like fighting baby zombies. Fight you where you're slower. There we go. And he had the courtesy to drop his armor, but... Oh, it's enchanted. What in the world? What I drop? I don't need the stone pickaxe. What are you enchanted with? Protection? Is that better than what I currently have? No. It can't be, can it? No, I don't think it is. I'm gonna look into it, because I don't think leather with protection 2 is better than just something that has flat out armor too. Yeah, and it looks like all of the creepers despawned as well. So that is very frustrating. So it looks like we're gonna have to wait until later to make the actual makeshift firearm, but we managed to get started with create. And while it's not pretty, it is working and we are able to automate some processes. And hopefully we'll be able to actually build something here for all of our create stuff to go into and maybe get some sort of like automation center going on here. But that's probably gonna be something for the next episode. I'm honestly really looking forward to it. So far, I'm really liking this mod pack. It's a lot of fun. and. And it's it's very interesting compared to other similar mod packs. I wasn't expecting there to be as many changes to recipes that I'm already familiar with from other mods, but I suppose it makes sense considering this mod pack doesn't even have the nether. We'll figure that out when we get to it. Apparently we go to the moon instead. I don't know how we're gonna do that. It's um kind of far. I mean, that's the sun, but the moon's kind of far. But in the next episode, we're just gonna focus on getting a bit farther in Create and maybe getting our first diamond. But until then, bye bye <laughs>